ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلله فلا هادي له اما بعد الله تبارك وتعالى tells us in his glorious book in surah at-tawbah chapter 9 and verse 19 بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أجعلتم سقاية الحاج وعمارة المسجد الحرام كمن آمن بالله واليوم الآخر وجاهد في سبيل الله لا يستوون عند الله والله لا يهدي القوم الظالمين. Have you made the provisions? Have you made the providing of water for the pilgrims and the maintenance of al-masjid al-haram in Mecca equal to the deeds of one who believes in Allah and the last day and strives in the cause of Allah? They are not equal in the sight of Allah, and Allah does not guide the wrongdoing people. Now, the, the background of this verse is Al-Abbas, the uncle of Prophet ﷺ, before he accepted Islam, he was from a tribe of Quraysh. You know, Quraysh were different families. So his branch of the family took care of providing water for the pilgrims, taking care of the Kaaba, the, the, the mosque, the, the Masjid al-Haram, and you know anything related to the um, accommodating the pilgrims, they were in charge of it. Other tribes were in charge of other things. But as if, you know, Allah is telling them in this verse, you know, as if they thought that that was enough. They did not have to accept Islam. They didn't have to do anything else. They believed in Allah and they were doing all these good deeds you know, to, to accommodate pilgrims and accommodate visitors to his house. And Allah says, no, they're not the same. The ones who believe and are steadfast and they, they strive in the sake of Allah cannot be compared to somebody who may be doing, you know, good deeds but is not steadfast. Now, doing good deeds, they have their own reward with Allah and I'm not saying don't do it, but I'm saying is when you do it, make sure that you're steadfast, you believe in Allah and all of the other things that, that come in. When you combine both, that's the best solution. So Allah Taala in this verse is correcting a misconception that you know, we may have. If you have somebody who's wealthy, he goes in and he builds masajid and, and donates and do this. Great. That's great work. But if that person does not believe in Allah and, and the day after, the, the true belief that makes him steadfast, that makes him righteous, that makes him, you know, get closer to Allah, then all that work is, it cannot be compared. So... So it is not enough. We have, you know, the comparison I would put in front of you is you have a person who went maybe 15 years to college to get, you know, a bachelor, a master's, a doctorate, do research, you know, get knowledge, write books. That person is not the same as somebody who has a printing press next door who prints books. They're both, both functions are important. But you cannot compare one who authors a book with one who prints a book. They're both needed, but one is a much higher, higher status. So doing great deeds, these are good. But that is not a substitute for being steadfast on Allah's orders. You have to have that first. So that's where the priority should be. So nothing can be compared to belief in Allah and acting on that belief. You know, amana billah is believing in Allah. And I talked last, last time about this amana billah. When you say I'm a mu'min, there's a lot of stuff that goes behind to back that claim. Aman is not just believing that Allah exists. Almost everyone believes there is a God to this, that created this universe. But how many people bother to get closer to that God? What does this God want from me? What is his scriptures? What am I supposed to do in this life to please him? That part is missing. They agree that a God created the universe, but they want to do whatever they want to do. They don't want to obey him. So that's not what the, the iman, man amana billahi wal yawm al-akhir in this verse, 
you believe in Allah and the last day. And why the two are together? Because if you believe in the last day, you know that you will be held responsible for everything that you're doing. That's what the last, the believing in the last day is. There's a lot of people that believe in Allah, but they don't believe in the last day. They think they can do whatever they want in this life and there is no recourse. There is no day where they have to stand in front of Allah and explain why did you do this and be held accountable for whatever they did, whether good or bad. So believing in Allah and, and the last day will make you steadfast. And steadfast is basically whatever Allah wants is what I'm going to do. Whatever Allah told me not to do, I'm not going to do. That's where that steadfastness come in, you know, come into play. And when you have that right belief, that right belief should make you, you know, perform actions that confirm that faith. When you have that strong belief in Allah, you start doing good, good deeds. So you strive to please Allah and anything that pleases Him, you want to do. Anything that doesn't please Him, you don't want to do. Helping others. Helping, you know, the poor, feeding, feeding the, the hungry. All of these things, after believing in Allah and the last day, it should drive you into action. So you defend the faith, you spread it, you become a good example of a believer. So it is not enough to say, I'm spending on these charitable projects. Building a masjid is a great deed. But what's better than building the masjid is if you are a student in that masjid, spending time to study, to learn about Allah. What does Allah want from me? What, is my, what am I supposed to do in this life? That has a higher status in the eyes of Allah, based on this verse, than actually spending the money to build the masjid, which is also a great deed, but they're not the same. So it is not enough. It is very easy to spend. I mean, it's very easy to write a check. But to be steadfast on Allah's orders, that's tough. That requires a strong will. That requires that you withhold yourself from doing something that you really wanted to do. Or maybe you could do, but you decided because it does not please Allah, I will not do it. It's very easy to write a check, especially if you have money. So the two cannot be compared. Steadfastness comes at a much higher level, and that's the, the level we need to strive Two, before you start doing all of these other good deeds. Because in the eyes of Allah, being a steadfast believer is much more important. And if you combine both, that's the best, that's the best situation. So good deeds are not, that the verse is telling us that good deeds are not a valid substitute for being steadfast on Allah's orders. And Allah says, لا يستوون عند الله والله لا يهدي القوم الظالمين That these actions are not the same in the eyes of Allah. And Allah does not guide the, the wrongdoers. The ones who wrong themselves by not spending the time to learn who Allah is. What does He want from us? They wrong themselves because when you don't have that knowledge, you're going to do a lot of stupid things. You're going to do a lot of bad things, and who are you hurting with those bad things? You're hurting yourself first and foremost, before you hurt anybody else. You're hurting yourself by not having the right knowledge that drives your action to be the right action. So if you want to, if you want to compress, say, business, you want to compress it into one word. All of the activities of a business is compressed in one word called profit. If you go into business, why do you go to business? You go to business to, have, to, to earn money, to have a profit, not to lose money. Nobody goes to business to lose money. So profit is what's gonna drive all of your business activities. So you can compress the whole business ecosystem into profit. Same thing with Islam. If you have to compress Islam into one word, it's steadfastness. If you don't have that taqwa and that steadfastness to obey Allah, to believe in Him, the correct belief, 
that stops you from hurting others, that drives you to do the right thing if you don't have that steadfastness, then nothing else matters. The nice calligraphy that you have, you know, in, in, in your home, the, the, the gold, you know, gold printed Quran, the, you know, all the stuff, you know, the, the dress, you know, the white dress that you have, the big beards, all of these are meaningless if you don't have the steadfastness. These are all appearances. The, you know, the heart of the matter is steadfastness. Is, Ya Allah, what do you want from me? Having the right belief and acting on that belief. And that belief doesn't come by osmosis. You have to put the, you have to put the time to study. You have to put the time to get that knowledge. Once you have the right knowledge, it drives your actions. And you act on that knowledge, and if the knowledge is correct, your actions will be correct as well. So do any good deeds that you can, but put the preference on getting the correct faith. The correct faith in Allah that makes you reverent of Him. That makes you, when you're alone, and nobody's watching you, nobody can judge you, nobody can say, don't look out the window to the neighbor. She's half dressed. That's the taqwa and the steadfastness that you have. That say, I will not look, even though nobody can, nobody sees me. Allah sees you. But nobody else can see you. Nobody else can, you know, can, can punish you for it. Same thing with fasting. If you are in 95 degree temperature outside, you've been working outside all day, there's still five more hours to break your fast. You go inside your house and there's a nice cold bottle of water. Will anyone, you know, put you in jail if you go for that bottle? No. But the taqwa of Allah, your steadfastness, your desire to have your, your fast accepted by Allah prevents you from touching it. You can be dying of thirst and you will never touch it. That's the type of steadfastness we're talking about here. So when Allah in the Quran mentions Amana billah, to believe in Allah, that's the type of belief. Not, not the belief by words, the belief by action. That you manifest that belief into, into activities. So there is no substitute to seeking knowledge about Allah and what He wants from us in, in this life. And if we have this correct knowledge, it will drive our actions to be correct.